Coming up, a new anthology curated by an award-winning Lumi poet. Hyde Erdrich is preoccupied. Watch her video on poetry. Plus, can traditional and Western medicine coexist? I am Mackenzie Allen Charmley. Join us for those interviews plus headlines from the ICT newscast. This program is made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people. The Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication at Arizona State University is a proud supporter of Indian Country Today. Students at Cronkite News and Gaylord College at the University of Oklahoma cover indigenous communities together. This important work is distributed by more than 100 news organizations. This collaboration provides a much needed boost to coverage of Native American communities nationwide. Learn more at cronkitenews.azpbs.org. This is the ICT Newscast with Aliyah Chavez. Tanangale, we're so happy you could join us. In Egypt, a major international climate convention kicked off last week. The 2022 United Nations Climate Change Conference, known as COP27, commenced in Egypt on, October, on November 6th. The important annual summit brings together leaders from non-governmental organizations, civil society, and major businesses, in addition to governmental delegations from the majority of the world's nations. One issue emphasized by leaders and activists was limiting the global temperature to 1.5 degrees Celsius, recommitting to the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement. But also of the whole world, if we can't hold on to that 1.5 degree goal, then we don't have any future. Mankind would not have any future. More than 100 world leaders will gather at the conference to discuss the problem of climate change until November 18th. In New Mexico, biologists are working to rescue an endangered fish as the Rio Grande continues to dry up. Decades of droughts and overuse have drained one of North America's long, longest rivers. For the first time in four decades, that river went dry in Albuquerque recently. Many endangered Rio Grande silvery minnow, a shimmery pinky-sized native fish, went with it. Now, fish biologists are rescuing this endangered native species from pools of water in a dried-out section of the river. Thomas, Thomas Archdeacon is a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service biologist in charge of the rescue program. Over the past three years, we've seen kind of moderate to severe drought, and it does seem like we're kind of going backwards in our in progress towards recovery, and that this isn't really helping to get to recovery. It's just kind of preventing the final extinction of the species in the wild. Water experts say recent conservation efforts make it more difficult to identify where more water can be saved and left in the Rio Grande. In Canada, Indigenous youth are taking part in a national challenge to solve their community's drinking water challenges. High school students from the Nunavik region in Quebec traveled to British Columbia to address the crisis, which now includes school closures. APTN's Lee Wilson has more felt very nervous to talk in front of people. Last week, seven students from Acoustic High School traveled to a British Columbia campus to meet with researchers, entrepreneurs, and First Nation water operators to discuss their community's water challenge. It is part of a pilot project by Rizzo Center for Mobilizing Innovation that started earlier this year. They are based at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. The students shared their central water treatment plant delivers water to each house and school. Sometimes there's not enough water, so the school needs to close. We spend two weeks without water. It's too crazy because you don't have some, you, you cannot wash, you cannot take a shower to, to cook. If you, are not, you, have, you have no water to, in your kitchen, you cannot cook. According to Rizzo, in six communities, students K through 12, are taking part in the Indigenous Youth Potable Water Challenge across Canada. Kim Brown, a Simshan water engineer and advisor for the Water Challenge, says more communities wanted to take part but did not have staffing or mentors available in their areas. They'll need to find more ways 
for youth to get involved without putting a burden on the communities. Uh, I think we have to work on expanding uh, this to get, ensure that everyone who wants to be involved can be involved and we have some barriers to get over with um, helping communities with capacity. Brown says seeing the students' willingness to learn and engage has been inspiring. She added that clean drinking water problems in Indigenous communities are still an issue that needs to be addressed. She says in some places, they're getting worse due to droughts, which leads to water shortages. I think a lot of people are aware of the boil water advisories that happen from quality, but the less kind of talked about things are water shortages. What happens when there is no water? What happens when the wells run dry? Do we drill another well, for example, or do we find another source? Um, And then that introduces even more where, well, now you're going to have to design new treatment. Lee Wilson, APTN National News, Kitimat. Well, the new film Prey features an all-Native cast and a strong Indigenous heroine. Prey is the first film in the Predator franchise to include a female and Indigenous heroine. The movie stars Fort Peck Sioux citizen Amber Midthunder, who plays Naru, the female heroine, and Comanche citizen Jane Myers, who is the creative producer of the film. Meyer says she wanted a film about a strong Indigenous woman with an all-Native cast and crew, and that's what she got. Prey even has a version with the Comanche language. The film is generating Oscar buzz for the foreign language category, and while the prospects about Prey 2 yet are unknown, the movie made history in the film industry. Prey is streaming now on Hulu for all to enjoy. And those are the headlines for the ICT Newscast. Raina Priest is the curator and editor of the anthology. She is a Maxine Cushing Gray Distinguished Writing Fellow and the recipient of an Allied Arts Foundation Professional Poets Award. From the Lumi Nation, she is also the Washington State Poet Laureate. Welcome, Raina. Hi there. Hello. <laughs> so this collection of works um, by Indigenous writers is amazing. Could you tell us about your process of editing this publication? Yeah, so uh, the Native Arts and Cultures Foundation got in touch um, and asked if I would be interested in editing the the anthology of their um, awardees, their fellow, their National Arts Fellowship awardees in literature, and uh, I enthusiastically said yes. And the the process was just kind of a lot of reading. Um, I I reviewed a lot of their work. I invited them to submit um, work. To, to be included, and then um, also looked at the, the the body of their work and um, made selections. And so, um, once the once the uh, pieces that are in the anthology were selected, it was just a kind of a matter of you know organizing them and um, working with the the designer and the pr- the production editor. Laura Kales um, at the NACF to to just kind of get it out into the world. You know, it was, it was a really cool um, experience for me. And are there any um, particular themes um, to this collection? Well, it's um, I wouldn't say that there is, that the collection follows a theme. I felt like I selected for works that. Um, were just really um, that spoke spoke to me the deepest, um, and so they spoke to different things. But um, I feel like not having it follow a single a, a single theme makes it um, more far reaching, broader in scope. And so um, the anthology is called the Larger Voice, and I called it that because. Um, I took the, it's from a passage in um, Linda Hogan's essay that's included in the anthology. And um, she talks about the the birds, it's from, it's from the ways of cranes. And she talks about the cranes being out on the landscape, making all this racket. And then a peal of thunder comes through and then they're silent as if they're listening to the larger voice. And then they start chattering again from the four corners of the world. And I really, um, I really liked that the idea that what we as writers do is is we listen to the larger voice, you know, and then we go and we carry that message out into the into the larger world. Um, the larger voice being, you know, whatever's happening out in the atmosphere and um, 
and the and you know the weather i guess the metaphorical weather so to speak um so that's where the title comes from and um that's that's kind of outlined in the preface that i wrote for the anthology and then the work that's included is just such um well it's 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 all just so amazing the writers who are there are you know they were awarded the National Arts Fellowship because of their excellence in their craft. And so um, really engaging with their writing was a real privilege for me. And you know, you, you, you're you speaking of these writers and um, these writers are Native Arts and Cultures Foundation Literature Fellows. Um, and that's just one way to support Native creatives. So what ultimately, what does this fellowship mean? Well, um, so they, the Native Arts and Cultures Foundation gave, um, I think it was 90 fellowships over the course um, th through for the duration um, that the fellowship was active. And um, they, I, I think it was an un, um, encumbered award, so the fellows could just use it for whatever they needed. And um, it was really just to celebrate excellence in Native arts and cultures. And Raina, are there any other, um, we're, we're about done with our time here, but are there any other projects that you're working on? Yeah, so as State Poet Laureate of Washington State, I am assembling an anthology of poetry about salmon. Um, I got over 400 submissions um, from poets throughout Washington State. And um, they were each allowed to submit up to three poems. So I, I reviewed all of those submissions and I'm now assembling the collection. And um, it's really to just celebrate our our native salmon run, our wild salmon runs here in the state, which many of them are, um, are endangered. And to just kind of, I wanted to raise awareness of that and also to really look closely at, at what we're at risk of losing here. So, um, and what the threats are too, because I think a lot of people might not know. And to celebrate it through poetry, I think opens the door to talking about that in a way that is not, um, it, it's, it's more focused on bringing union rather than creating divides, so. Well, thank you, Raina. Um, you can download the book at nativeartsandcultures.org. We appreciate your time today. Yep, thank you, Heishka. Let's take a look at Hyde Erdrich's poetry film, Preoccupied, co-directed by ICT senior producer, Vincent Moniz. I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I've known rivers. Preoccupied. River, 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 I never, never, never etched your spiral icon in limestone, or, for that matter, pitched a tent on cement near your banks, banks of marble, stock still, all movement in the plaza. River walking its message on an avenue, rallied in bitter wind. I've known rivers. Excuse my digression, my mind tends. In reality, my screen is lit with invitations. Bake a casserole, send pizza, make soup for the 99%. I've known rivers. 
sorry, somehow I haven't time. Flow, 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 both ways in time. There's a river to consider after all. No time, no hours, no decades, no millennia. No, I cannot dump cans of creamed corn and turkey on noodles and offer forth sustenance again. A bit preoccupied, we original 100%, who are also 1% more or less. Simply distracted, tar, sands, pipelines, foster care, polar bears, hydrofracking, and the playlist deeply intoning. River, river, our river, map of the Milky Way, reflection of stars, whence all life commenced. 100% of all life on our planet. River in the middle, Mississippi, not the East Coast Hudson, where all this started. Waterway, Max Fleischer's team lushly rendered via the wonder of Technicolor. Emerging from an underwater lair, a mad scientist we comprehend as indigenous has lost his signifiers. No braids, no blanket. But we recognize him. A snappy dresser who flashes a maniac grin. He is not, not your TV Indian. Ignoble savage. And I still say Manhattan rightfully belongs to my people. Possibly, but just what do you expect us to do about it? Occupy, occupy, worked for the 99. Occupy, reoccupy, Alcatraz and wounded me. Sorry, somehow now I've too much time. Flow, flow, flow both ways. Story, history, story. There's a river that considers us after all. All time, all hours, all decades, all millennia. River, 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 I never, 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 but that is not to say that I, I won't river. ever. Notes of Preoccupied Digression Descendants of the indigenous population of the U.S. remain just a tad less than 1% of the population according to the 2010 census. If you add Native Hawaiians to the total, we are 1.1% of the population, so we are more or less the original 1% as well as the original 100%. As the Occupy movement took hold, indigenous groups continued struggles to protect our homelands from imminent threats such as tar sands in Canada and its Keystone Pipeline, copper mining in Minnesota and Wisconsin, and hydrofracking elsewhere, everywhere it seems. This era of alternative energy has become the new land grab, the new water grab. Indigenous activists are thoroughly preoccupied with the social and environmental issues I mentioned and more. Activists can't be everywhere at once, not like Superman. I refer here, of course, to the Crash Test Dummies 1991 Superman song that despairs, the world will never see another man like him. In this 1942 cartoon, Electric Earthquake, an indigenous but not stereotypically Indian mad scientist is thwarted, of course, by Superman. At one point, Clark Kent admits indigenous land claim as possibly valid, but says there's nothing the Daily Planet can do about it a shrewd Tesla wannabe. Our villain attempts to publish his demands first, then occupies Lois Lane while toppling Manhattan skyscrapers. You can see this beauty all over the internet. The internet. The internet.
traditional healing has always been a part of indigenous culture, and it's especially useful for treating mental health. With access often limited, Arizona and other states are seeking authorization from the federal government to cover these services under Medicaid. Laura Barkfield, Barkfeld from Cronkite News has this report. Some of you probably don't know, or just different ways of how people use the fire. I fold the arms clan, born for the two waters that flow together clan. Um, my maternal grandparent is on um, Bitter Water, and my paternal grandparent is uh, Black Street on the Running Tree Clan. Um, my name is Wayne Wilson. I was born in Fort Defiance. <laughs> Modern medicine, the traditional medicine, which one? Or can they be integrated? <laughs> I think it depends on the individual. Um, like me, I, I, I consider myself an eclectic Diné. Like trauma, I try to deal with it multidimensionally. You can use native way, or you can use modern science way, or you can use another different way. Um, my mom was from here, Pine Springs, and then, which is seven miles up the road from this place, um, Burnt Water. And then um, my father is from Nyuzi, New Mexico. And um, so they're gone now. They passed away. My parents passed away. Um, they were um, part of the boarding school, um, I guess part of the boarding school experience. I experienced a lot of um, the alcoholism and domestic violence in my family. It was confusing for me, a lot of pain, um, trying to understand what, why, why is it this way. And my sister used to just take me into the room and say, you know, stay in here. Let's, she'd lock us in the room and, and they'd be yelling, screaming, dishes flying, and all kinds of things happening. Kind of brought a lot of instability in, in, my, in me and, and with my, my life. We would go to Gallup. Um, my dad was working at the sawmill there in Navajo, New Mexico. I just remember sometimes where we were coming back and somehow they would purchase alcohol, beer, um, whiskey. Well, twice we were in an accident. One of them, uh, um, my mom went through the window shield and she almost died, but uh, she had a, a, a cut across her face. And um, my grandmother said that was enough. I want my grandkids to live, so she she told us to, told them to split. There's a lot of trauma during that time. We went from living in a house <laughs> to living in a hogan like this. You know? um, I used to I remember where my grandfather had similar to the same items that I have. You know, grandson, he'd say, you know. I and mean, we're going to do things to here together, and uh, we're going to pray together, we're going to sing together, and um, need you to, you know, you try, try to pay attention as much as you can, um, because um, I don't know how things are going to change, so. I guess in a lot of ways, everything is like a ceremony, you know. That's the way I understand it. Even breathing, you know, your breath, your heart beating is a, is a ceremony. Everything's moving, your blood, and then your, the chemistry reactions that happen in your brain, that's all synchronized with um, everything that we do. So like if we're exposed to trauma or something that happens, you know, a drastic thing that happens, death in the family, you know, things like that, it, it affects you. And so how do we um, overcome that? Uh, it takes, it takes, of course, it takes time, but then there's these ways that we have to come back to, to uh, pray, you know, pray, sing, and um, of course you got to go and use the herbs to clean, cleanse yourself, um, sweat lodge, you know, um, songs, and like uh, even this, you know, using the, the, the pipe, you know, we use the pipe, the traditional Navajo pipe, um, and then um, I was uh, using the natural uh, tobaccos that we get. Um, I, my grandfather used to go with him. He used to go out 
go get the tobacco, different types of tobacco that we use. And like I said, they're all, everything's a tool and our medicines are out there and outside, you know, trees and different herbs that we use, you know, they're all out there. It's our, it's our pharmacy. So we have to take care of that, you know. When you're not in harmony and balance with the, the universe, then that's, it's, it's affecting you. It's affecting the chemistry um, happening in your brain and then in your body. So it's like it, it affects you like trauma. Trauma does that. It throws you off and then you're, you're, not, you're not either not thinking right or you're not doing. So we have to reset yourself. That's a slice of our indigenous world. For all the latest, visit ictnews.org. From all of us in the newsroom, stay safe, my relatives. Sometimes you got to take a stand Just because you know you can oh, You got to run, you got to run This program is made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people.